everyone, we're happy to be back and this is the latest Tazing News with me, Vanessa. Prime Minister of Cambodia gets vaccine to fight against the COVID-19. Cambodian Prime Minister Hun Sen received a shot of an AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine supplied by India. Hun Sen vows the first vaccinate with Sinopharm's shots donated by China, but later says he is too old for the vaccine. His sons and the Justice and Environment Ministers are among the first to get it instead. China is one of Cambodia's closest allies, and Hun Sen dismissed public hesitance about the safety of the Sinopharm vaccine. He urges people below 60 to get the Sinopharm vaccine and those over 60 to receive the AstraZeneca vaccine. Cambodia received its first batch of 324,000 doses of the AstraZeneca vaccine made in India and supplied through the World Health Organization-backed COVAX vaccine sharing program. China continues to provide vaccines and contribute to developing countries that need. Wang Wenbin, spokesman of the Ministry of Foreign Affairs at a press briefing in Beijing, says China will continue to provide vaccines to developing countries in need and make its own contribution to building a global community of health for all. China has consistently taken concrete actions to realize President Xi Jinping's important declaration. After China developed COVID-19 vaccines, they will serve as a global public goods and China will make its contribution to getting vaccines available and affordable to developing countries. Firstly, in addition to Pakistan, China is also providing vaccine assistance to 13 other developing countries, including Brunei, Nepal, the Philippines, Myanmar, Cambodia, Laos, Sri Lanka, Mongolia, Palestine, Belarus, Sierra Leone, Zimbabwe, and Equatorial Guinea. Next, China will provide vaccine aid to 38 other developing countries in need. We are also actively involved in the COVAX facility of the World Health Organization, through which we are provide vaccines to developing countries. China supports domestic enterprises to work with their foreign partners in the research and development and cooperative productions of vaccines. Wong stresses that the response to the epidemic requires the concerted efforts of the international community. China will continue to provide vaccines to relevant countries, especially developing countries, timely with its capacity, so as to make its contribution to building a global community of health for all. We also expect the international community to make joint efforts to promote equitable distribution and use of vaccines globally and ensure that vaccines are available and affordable to developing countries. Wong says vaccines of Sinopharm and Sinovac have been exported to clinical trial countries such as the United Arab Emirates, Morocco, Indonesia, Turkey, Brazil and Chile. A British man released from prison after being convicted for murder on a Bali beach. A British man jailed for his role in the death of an Indonesian policeman in 2016 on a beach in Bali is released after serving his sentence. Today Mr. David Taylor is free. He entered the Kerobogan prison with a six-year sentence under Article 170, which is assault leading to death. He has served approximately four years and six months of punishment and have been granted 18 months and 15 days of remission. <laughs> David Taylor, 38, was jailed in March 2017 together with his Australian girlfriend, Sarah Connor, over the death of traffic policeman Wayan Sudarsa, whose body was found on the island popular Skuta Beach with neck and head wounds. Taylor left Bali's Karabokan jail dressed in a black t-shirt and with dark glasses and a mask. He did not comment to reporters before getting into a waiting car, but the head of the prison, Friki Jaya Subing, says he had been granted 18 months and 15 days of remission. They were charged with assault leading to death and Taylor was sentenced to six years in prison and Connor to four years. And Connor was granted an early release last year due to good behavior. 
but they were released early because of the good behavior. Hundreds of Myanmar attend the funeral of Kiel Sin, a protester that killed on the bloodiest day since the coup. Hundreds of mourners in northern Myanmar attending the funeral of a 19-year-old protester who was killed, raided by security forces. Kiel Sin was killed when she was shot in the head while protesting on the streets of Mandalay. The phrase on the t-shirt, she wore the day she was murdered, everything is going to be fine, goes viral on social media as users post them, deviating from the security forces, which according to the UN killed 38 people. During open burials, mourners sang revolutionary songs and chanted anti-coup slogans. One witness says police and soldiers opened fire with live ammunition with little warning a day after neighboring countries asked the junta to restrain themselves. United Nations Special Envoy for Myanmar, Christine schreiner burgener says in New York, on Wednesday was the bloodiest day since the February 1st coup bringing the total death toll to over 50 as the military tries to strengthen its strength. Diplomats say United Nations Security Council will discuss the situation in closed meetings. At least more than 30 protesters dead during the military coup demonstration. More than 60 protesters death as the military killed protests in several towns and cities. The United Nations says the most violent day since demonstrations against last month's military coup first broke out. A witness says police and soldiers opened fire with live rounds with little warnings. In Yangon, a protester tells Reuters that they saw two people being killed. The military junta appears determined to stamp out protest against the coup that ousted the elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi. A spokesman for the ruling military council did not answer telephone calls seeking comment. <laughs> The violence took place a day after foreign ministers from Southeast Asian neighbors are just restrained but failed to unite behind a call for the release of Suu Kyi and the restoration of democracy. Brunei in Indonesia urges National Association of Southeast Asian Nations to facilitate dialogue on a Myanmar situation. Indonesian Foreign Minister Retno Marsudi met with Brunei's Sultan Hassan al bolkiah in the Brunei capital to urge the Association of the Southeast Asian Nation Chair Country to facilitate dialogue amongst member states on the situation in Myanmar. Speaking during an e-briefing after the meeting, Retno said Indonesia will hold on to the principles of non-interference and will prioritize constructive engagement and the safety and welfare of the people of Myanmar. Indonesia and Malaysia have also sought a special meeting following the February 1st military coup. Such meetings are rare and arranging one could be a challenge, however, giving Asians policy of non-interference and its member domestic issues and their contrasting responses to the army takeover. After her trip to Brunei, Retno is expected to meet her Singaporean counterpart, Vivian Balakrishnan. Balakrishnan speak about alarming developments in Myanmar. He did not support widespread sanctions in response to the coup. Mount Sinabo, Indonesia, eruption with ash as high as five kilometers. The country's volcanology center says Indonesia's Mount Sinabo volcano sent a cloud of hot ash as high as five kilometers or 3.1 miles in its first big eruption since August last year. 
Mount Sinabung's activity increased since last year and the alert for the volcano in North Sumatra province has been placed at the second highest level. Indonesia's Volcanology and Geological Hazards Mitigation Center says no casualties are reported but an official urges people to stay at least 3 kilometers from the crater. Indonesia has nearly 130 active volcanoes more than any other country. Sinabung had been inactive for centuries before it erupted again in 2010. Philippines military starts vaccination using Sinovac doses against COVID-19. The Armed Forces of the Philippines launches its COVID-19 inoculation drive a day after healthcare workers receive China's Sinovac COVID-19 doses. An initial batch of 600,000 doses of Sinovac vaccines donated by China arrives in the country, of which are donated to the Philippine military. Armed Forces of the Philippines spokesperson Major General Edgar Arevalo in a statement says Philippine military personnel are required to get vaccinated and may face disciplinary actions. He also adds that they may choose a different brand but at their own expense. The country records 12,369 deaths from the virus and 580,442 total reported cases including infections with the more infectious UK variant. The Philippines is the last to start its immunization program among its Southeast Asian neighbors despite having one of the region's worst coronavirus problems. Although the Philippines has been in talks with most major factors of coronavirus vaccines to buy a combined 161 million doses. The Prime Minister of Singapore calls on the military to release leader Aung San Suu Kyi because sanctions will hurt people rather than the military. Yes. Singapore's Prime Minister calls for Myanmar's military to release elected leader Aung San Suu Kyi to allow the country to move forward and he adds the sanction will hurt the people rather than the military. In an interview with the BBC, Lee Xiong Lung says the military will have learned from the past that it was the country's interest for it to work out in an arrangement with an elected civilian government as the military route would lead nowhere. To, and then to arrest Dong Aung San Suu Kyi as well as her ministers and the president and charge them with oh, walkie-talkie offences and things like that. I don't think that's going to help solve the problem. So you really have to go, get back, release uh, uh, Aung San Suu Kyi, negotiate with her and her team and work out a peaceful way forward for Myanmar. The Singapore leader also does not expect sanctions to hurt the military leaders in Myanmar based on the past experiences. Outsiders have very little influence on this. Uh, you can ostracize them, you can uh, condemn them, you can pass resolutions or not. But it really has very little influence on what the Myanmar's will do. It had zero influence the last time round. Uh, and the only impact was, for lack of anybody willing to talk to them, they fell back on those people who were willing to talk to them. Other Association of Southeast Asian Nations members have also urged actions following the coup. Indonesia urges Myanmar to open its doors to the ASEAN bloc to resolve escalating tensions, while Malaysia proposed forming an expert group on elections to provide democratic support to Myanmar. Myanmar nationals in Thailand pay tribute to protesters who died in Myanmar. Hundreds of Myanmar nationals gather in front of the United Nations headquarters in Bangkok to pay tribute to the protesters killed in Myanmar. Protest was the bloodiest day since the military overthrew the elected government of Aung San Suu Kyi on February 1st, with the United Nations Special Envoy on Burma saying 38 people had been killed. I can't 
The simple way of describing our military are terrorists. They are terrorizing our country. In simple words, they took our leader, we voted for an NLD, we voted for NLD. They are taking over now. That is not fair. If you want to rule the country, play fair, play fair, win by vote. The United Nations Human Rights Chief, Michelle Bachelet, calls on the security forces to halt what she called their vicious crackdown on peaceful protesters. Thank you for watching. Stay safe, stay healthy, please wash your hands and continue to maintain social distancing rule. Do not forget to use your mask. Bye.